Hello and welcome to Your Winning Connection. I'm your host, Pastor Kenny Springer, and it is a joy and pleasure once again to be in your home. I'm so grateful that you've tuned in today to this station to hear about the wonderful and matchless name of Jesus Christ. I hope and believe that by the end of today's program, you will have new insight and a new perspective on what it means to be a Christian, to be saved by grace, and to have a relationship with the Almighty God, and to know His Son, Jesus. Amen. Well, friends, I am again so glad that you've invited me into your home, and I believe that God has a word for you today. I believe that according to Scripture, His love for you is everlasting. From day to day, He loves you more and more. That God wants a relationship with you. He wants to walk with you, talk with you, be part of your life. He sees you as a treasure in the earth and as a child in the home. He loves you unconditionally, unwaveringly, and eternally. And so today, we're going to continue on with the subject that we began just a few episodes ago concerning the wonderful word, the gospel. What does it mean when we hear the word gospel? Oftentimes, we hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, four of the books in the Bible. Paul writes about the gospel often. But what does it really mean when we hear the word gospel? As we discussed previously, the word means the message of good news or just simply good news. Gospel is good news. The gospel of Jesus is good news to those of us who were perishing in our sins. And that would mean each and every one of us. Because the scripture states that all have sinned and come short of the glory of the Lord. None of us are good. None of us are perfect. None of us are without fault. None of us stand justly in the sight of God as though we have never committed a sin or a wrong. Each and every one of us who is alive and well, whether you are a child just born yesterday or a man or a woman of a hundred years old, all have sin in our DNA, in our nature. Now, I know some may argue and say, how can a child who cannot yet speak or or walk, how can they have sinned? It's not that they've committed sin, but rather they were born in sin. Born into sin. See, the scriptures teach this, that Adam and Eve were created in the Garden of Eden. And they were sinless. They were made to have fellowship with God and to live forever. Yet, on a fateful day, Satan came in and deceived the woman and said, Take and eat of the fruit of the tree. She said, No, the Lord God has said that we shall not take of it nor eat of it, for the day that we do we shall surely die. Yet he deceived her and talked her into it, and she did take and eat, hoping to be more like God. Then it says, Eve gave also to her husband, Adam. And Adam he took and he ate, rebelling against God, knowing full well what he had done. And from that moment, they sinned against the Lord God Almighty. And when they sinned, they opened up the door for all sin to enter into the earth. Up until that time, Adam was the doorkeeper, so to speak, of the earth. He was the one to keep sin away. But he reached out through rebellion, opened up the door. Satan came through and brought sin and death to the whole world. Thus the scripture says, through one man's sin, Adam, all have sinned. Because our father of the flesh, Adam, sinned, that nature has been passed down to all of us through creation. So we're all born into sin. Thus the scripture states, you must be born again. Born again. Our spirit man can be born again. Now, our flesh cannot be born again. The Bible actually says 
that our flesh is enmity against the Lord. It hates God. It doesn't like God. It rebels against God. It's prideful, lazy, arrogant, lustful, evil. You leave the flesh to itself and it will lead you into corruption. But the conscience of men, the inward man, is a compass to lead us out of all of these evil things. However, we still cannot do it perfectly and without fault. Thus all have sinned. We all come short of the glory of the Lord. No matter how hard we try, we still commit sin. We still disappoint God and break His word. Whether it be small or great, does not matter. If you break it in the smallest point, you're guilty of breaking it all. And so, we need a Savior. We need to be redeemed, rescued, delivered. But we can't do it ourselves. Thus comes the good news of Jesus Christ. That even though we could not save ourselves, there is one who could save us. And that is the Lord Jesus himself. He came to the earth, sent on a mission from God the Father. Came to the earth to take my place, to become a substitute for me and for you. That the sins that we had committed that were demanding judgment would fall on him and not on us. And so we have been set free through faith in Jesus that we can now live with God for all of eternity in the heavenly places. Now, obviously our flesh cannot live on the earth forever because the Bible states that the flesh is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God, nor can it be. It is unredeemable in its present condition. It has to be glorified in the end. We'll discuss that at a later time. But today, I want us to focus on the word gospel, the good news. What is good news to a dying man? That you don't have to die anymore. What's the good news to a prisoner? You're set free. You're no longer a prisoner. What's good news to a blind man? Your eyes, they shall be open. These things are good. This is good news. Now, the gospel of Jesus Christ says that we were lost in our sins, in the world, having no hope and away from God. We were in despair, having no hope, condemned, having no way to deliver ourselves. Much like a man on a ship out at sea. There he is, miles and miles and miles away from any land. And the storm comes and begins to sink the ship. This is horrible news for the man, for he knows that even if he were to land in the water, he could only swim for so long. Any rescue is hundreds of miles away. Any land and refuge is far out of his reach. He knows that his fate is that he will die. This is horrible news. This is awful news. This is hopeless news, knowing that only in a matter of time will your life be lost, having no chance of rescue. But what is good news? The good news is that a ship is passing by and that they will come and lift you out of the water in just a few moments, that you'll not die, that you'll be rescued, that today will not be your last day on earth, but you shall live many more days. This would be good news. This is exactly what the gospel is. The gospel says that we were all men drowning in our sins, having no hope of rescue, having no way to save ourselves, that our strength was, would fail us soon and we would perish in our sins. This was the news of reality. All of us are in this condition. But the good news of Jesus Christ is that the ship of rescue is coming. That if you'll cry out onto the ship for help, they will steer their way to you and lift you up out of the water and rescue you. And today you'll not die, but you shall live. This is what Jesus came to do. He came to lift us up out of sin and save us, to rescue us from a certain destruction. Now, the scripture says the way he did that was that he took our place that he became sin, even though he knew no sin, 
so that we might be the right, made the righteousness of God through his actions. See, God made us to be righteous through Jesus. We didn't make ourselves righteous. None of us can earn heaven. Oftentimes I hear people ask, Pastor, what must I do to inherit heaven? What do I need to do to go to heaven? What good deed must I accomplish? I say there is none. There is no hope. You cannot earn heaven. cannot buy heaven. You cannot sacrifice your own life and please God to the point that he gives you heaven. None of this will accomplish your desire. Heaven must be received as a free gift from God. It's the grace of God. It's his goodness and mercy extended in an invitation that if you will believe, put your trust in his way, Jesus, that he will grant us access to him through Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except that he come by me. Imagine Jesus as a door in your home. If you're in one room and you wish to go to the next room, there is no way for you to do that except that you go through the doorway. You cannot break down the wall, cannot climb up on the roof, and come over and lower yourself down. This is foolishness. There is no way that these things could happen. The way you leave one room to enter another room is by the door. If you want to leave the life of sin and despair and hopeless judgment of condemnation, and you want to inherit or enter into the kingdom of God, and love and life and eternal blessing, you have to come through the door. You say, I don't want to use the door. Then you cannot enter to the new place. It makes perfect sense in our minds when we think about it in our home. So what do we do? We enter in through the door. Jesus is the door. You cannot get to the place of the Father except you come through Jesus. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life that you desire. So, we need to understand what the gospel means. The gospel means that all the negative and all the bad and all the horrid sin that is in the world that is condemning us, that we are tied to, we are being set free through Jesus Christ. For the scripture says, Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. When Jesus sets you free, you are truly free. Even though your outward conditions may seem to be the same, you still are the same height, you are still the same color, you still live in the same home, you have the same family, all the outward conditions seem to be the same. But what has changed is the inward man, the part of you that shall live forever and ever and ever and ever. The spirit of man is transformed through faith in Jesus Christ. The good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ is that we do not have to stay the way we are. We are not condemned to a life without change. We were not born into a certain class or a certain group that we cannot break from. But we are born all corrupt, yet we can become uncorrupt through Jesus. We are all born filthy, sinful, but we be can become clean and righteous through Jesus Christ. And so the gospel simply states that there is one who paid the price so that I could be set free from the guilt of my sin. My ability to pay wasn't accurate, wasn't strong enough, wasn't good enough. I did not have the ability to set myself free. But Jesus came and did what I could not do. He accomplished what I failed to accomplish. He stood up when I could not stand up. And he made a way when there was no way. And when I believe in what he has done, he grants me access through his sacrifice. Friend, this is the good news 
of Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus told his disciples all about these things. He taught them, not only them, but all that would listen. Everyone, everywhere, he spoke about these things. And then he told his disciples to go and do likewise. Let this message of grace and mercy, let it spread far and wide, as many as shall hear it. For as many as call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. And so Jesus says in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, he gave them instructions and says in verse number 7, he says, As you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's not some far time into the future. It's not so far removed that we shall never know it. But rather the kingdom of God, the way of God, the plan of God, the purpose of God. It is right here. It's present today. Another scripture states, today is the day of salvation. Today is your day. Right now. Not because of the day on the calendar. Not because of the month of the year. But because today you are hearing the good message of good news that God has offered you a way out of sin. And if you shall take it and believe in your heart, confess with your mouth on the Lord Jesus, then you shall be saved today. All of the reservations in hell shall be canceled and new reservations for all of eternity shall be registered with God in your behalf that you may live with him forever. He says here, as you go preach saying the kingdom of heaven, it is at hand. Verse eight, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead and cast out demons. Freely you have received, now freely give. We receive the good news of Jesus Christ freely. It cost us nothing. No money, no silver, no gold, no land, no sacrifice. We are to receive the free gift of God exactly that way, freely. God offers it to us without payment, without requirement, without blood, without gold, without precious jewels, freely. If you will receive it, you can have it. If you reject it, it will be upon you, not upon God. God does not put a price upon it in case someone could not pay. If God came and said, it will cost you even just one dollar, some would say, I can buy a million times that. Yet there would be those who say, I cannot even buy one time of that. It would be unfair and unjust. So God says, I'll give it to all freely without cost, without sacrifice, without payment. Out of the goodness of my heart, I'll extend to you the invitation to a new life. If you shall accept it, if you shall believe, then you will be with me. If you reject it and deny it, then that will be your choice and I will grant you that which you desire, which would be a life away from me. It is up to you. God gives us the invitation and the good news is you get to pick. It is your choice. If you say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ and you confess that you have sinned and you ask for forgiveness, then you shall be forgiven. If you confess that the Lord has been raised from the dead, you shall be saved. If you choose to reject it and not receive it, then that also will be given to you. And you will continue on the path of death and destruction until the day of judgment. In the day that you breathe your last breath and you enter into eternity, there to be cast into utter darkness, away from the light of God, away from the hope of God, there to be discarded like 
rubbish and trash upon the street, having no usefulness and no desire, God will remove you from Himself based upon your choice. But if you take the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and say, No, Lord, please, do not cast me aside, but receive me. I believe that you love me. I believe that you made a way for me through Jesus Christ. Then the Lord will extend His hands of mercy and grab hold of you and pull you to Himself, there to embrace you with His love, His mercy, His forgiveness, His tenderness, His blessing, and He will give you the whole kingdom of God. There you'll live with Him for all of eternity, from everlasting to everlasting to everlasting. For the scripture states that he that believeth in the Lord Jesus Christ, even though he may die in the flesh, he shall yet live. And he that believes in Christ shall never die. Not speaking of the body, but of the spirit. You'll live forever with God in the peace of his glory and the paradise of his city there to walk with Him and talk with Him and to enjoy that which we have not even experienced here on earth. A life with no sin, no sickness, no disease, no hunger, no sorrow, no pain, no struggle, none of the corruption that is in the earth, but the paradise of God. But you must come through the door of Jesus Christ. Remember what it says in Matthew chapter 10. Verse 7, as you go preaching, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Also, heal the sick. What is good news to a sick person? You are sick no more. That is wonderful news. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. And cast out demons. All that brings death and destruction. All that brings pain and torment. The Lord said, as you go. Reveal to them the plan of God. And the plan of God is that there be no sickness, no disease, no death, and no demonic powers. This is God's will and God's heart. God's desire for you is that you live a life filled with peace. Yes, we are in the world, but we're not of the world. Yes, in this life, we will have trials and tribulations. But Jesus said, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. In me is the answer of hope and peace. Trusting in me will bring victory. Even in the midst of struggles, even in the midst of difficulty, they shall pass. Only hold fast to the Lord Jesus. Hold fast to your faith. Keep your confession that God is with you and you are with him. And the night shall pass till day. The pain shall pass to health. Poverty shall pass to prosperity. And you shall come out on the other side. From every mountaintop to mountaintop, there is a valley. And though we go through the valley, we can be like David, king of Israel. And he said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you art with me, O Lord. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In the middle of a dark hour, God is with you. And God is bringing you out of the valley, climbing you higher and higher until you stand on the mountaintop, seeing clearly, breathing the fresh air, standing in the clouds, rejoicing in God. Whatever you may be facing, know this. Jesus is the way out. He is the way you must transverse and come through. To, to arrive at the place that God has for you. And old friend, God has a place for you. A beautiful place. A place flowing with milk and honey. A place of blessing and life and health and prosperity. Joy. This is what God desires for His children. Yet, you must become His child. He doesn't desire it for His enemies, those who hate Him, he allows them to stay in their misery. But those that call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Oh, friend, would you like to call on the name of Jesus today? Would you like to be healed in your body? 
Would you like to be set free from the demonic oppression and the voices that whisper in your ear? Would you like to be free from disease and poverty? Would you like to be set free from the sins that convict our heart and condemn us in our mind? Would you like to lay your head down at night and sleep peacefully, having a clear conscience towards God? Waking up in the morning, hearing the birds singing in your ear, the sun rays falling upon the grass of the field, and say, today I'm alive in God. This is what we desire. This is what God desires. And it's available to you. He is inviting you into His kingdom. He's inviting you into His family. And if you will believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ that He died in your place for your sins and that they buried Him in the tomb, but on the third day, God our Father raised Him back to life and crowned Him King of kings and Lord of lords. If you believe that, and are willing to confess that right here today, then today the scripture shall be fulfilled in your life that says today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of your ransom. Today is the day you are rescued and set free. All sin will be removed. All transgressions erased. Every time you have broken the law of God will be forgiven. And you will start brand new right here today at this very moment. Oh, friend, would you like to pray with me? Would you like to receive the gospel of Jesus Christ into your heart and confess him as Lord? Oh, friend, I hope that you say yes to that. Many, many thousands and tens of thousands right now watching are saying yes. Be one of those and enter into the family of God today. Let's pray together. Can we do that? Will you pray with me as I lead you to the very door of God, Jesus Christ? Let's pray this together. Say it with your mouth out loud. Let your own ear hear it. Pray with me. Simply say, Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is your Son. I believe he died on the cross to pay for my sin. I believe they buried him in the tomb. But on the third day, you raised him to life. I confess, Jesus is Lord. Save me from my sins. I surrender today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness, friends. Welcome to the family of God. God has heard your heart and has answered. For all that call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. You are born again. Your past transgressions are removed. The prison cell is opened. You are free to go. Thanks be unto God for his mercy and his grace. He loves you, dear friend, and so do I. I can't wait to see how you grow in God. Each and every day will be a new adventure as you grow stronger and stronger in your faith. I want to help you with that. Contact us at the information that's on your screen. Let us know that you prayed with me today. We would love to be able to give you some information and help you in your journey and to rejoice with you for now you are my brother and my sister in Christ. Hallelujah. Well, that's my time for today. Tune in again next time as we discuss more of the things of God and witness the miracle power of His love. Until then, may God bless you. May God keep you. And may God prosper you in everything that you do. Till then, God be with you. We love you. So does God. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.